Welcome to Richmond Championship Dog Show 2016. Now, you might remember, if you watch Dog World TV an awful lot, uh, this time last year we spoke to the new Kennel Club chairman, uh, but now not so new Kennel Club chairman, Simon Lockshaw <laughs> joins us again. Um, Richmond is a great show. You, you had your hands on some uh, Siberian Huskies today? Yeah, um, I've always enjoyed coming to uh, Richmond show. It, it's, it's very interesting because a venue it can be quite uh, impacted by, you know, the uh, weather and, and the ground conditions. It doesn't take a lot of water. No. Uh, <laughs> fortunately, this year it's dry as a bone. We've had a bit of a damp day today, yeah. but the forecast is good for tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, I love coming to the show. And yes, I've had some Siberians today and I found a very uh, nice junior. Well, that, that, that sounds like Andrew Race. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, Last month at Welsh Kennel Club, um, you made a, a speech, your State of the Union address, if you like. Um, and the headline taken from, from that speech was the judging system. Um, and you described it as unfit for purpose. Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, I was chair of the judges subcommittee for five years before handing over to Anne MacDonald last year. And it, it is predominantly uh, a numbers-based system, so the criteria hangs very heavily on the number of dogs judged. And I think over the years that I've been involved, uh, I, I think that given that there aren't the numbers that can be achieved in terms of hands-on uh, at open shows or limit shows these days, it's become pretty uh, irrelevant. Uh, and we. I hope it's forcing us and the dog world at large to recognise we need a more fit for purpose um, education and training system for aspiring judges. And I think, you know, it's, it's overdue. I think where we are at the moment, the, for new judges coming through, we're almost uh, frozen. I think it's very difficult to get numbers where, uh, to support the system that's been in place for many years and it's, it, it is forcing everybody to think about a new way forward uh, and, and so I'm looking forward to that, yeah. Um, are, are, is there anything in the pipeline specifically? Yeah, I mean, it would be fair to say the Kennel Club Training Board and the Judges Subcommittee have been looking at this for some time. The whole issue of judging um, is a very emotional issue for uh, exhibitors, judges and everybody else. So. Um, it, it, it attracts a lot of attention. Uh, the general committee is considering some options at the moment uh, and right now they're looking at developing some detail behind a framework which we are looking at. But there'll be no uh, announcements, no uh, uh, information put out there until some significant details being developed and we're in a position to answer some of the questions that you all throw at me immediately yeah. <laughs> you know but it's going to be hopefully now it's it's uh, months maybe several months uh, rather than uh, years before we get we're able to get something out there I think that, that people will be very happy to hear that but in the current system or a future system will there ever be a, a chance for all breed judges, Xenothorn Andrews and the UK awards yeah. across the board. Is there a chance that can happen? Oh, I think absolutely. And I think um, we need to size and describe how all breed judges will be defined and recognised in the future. Uh, I, I mean, I, I think there is a, you know, over recent years, uh, it's been possible to, for people to accumulate very large numbers of breeds uh, working through the current criteria uh, and those people may not necessarily be the uh, very best, of, I've got to be careful how I put this, <laughs> the, the very best of judges in the view of the exhibitors, uh, whereas there may be judges who have not sought to accumulate huge numbers of breeds uh, but have focused on uh, their groups or you know, small enough and have judged those very well. And we need to think about how we um, develop those people with a, a, a good eye for a dog um, and, uh, and bring them on. So, 
All breed judges, yes, we will have all breed judges. How we tie that criteria down uh, is going to be a challenge. Yeah. Um, and sticking to the judges, something that was brought up at the AGM, um, the reciprocal arrangement with <laughs> the Kennel Club and the yeah, SCI sure. yeah, yeah. Um, was essentially scrapped by, by the membership. Well, the, uh, the members, um, through proxy voting and the uh, ballot on the day at the AGM, um, supported a motion which asked the general committee to get rid of the agreement that had been put in place. Uh, the general committee took that uh, feedback back. Um, they then asked the judges subcommittee to look at the uh, members' uh, reaction to the existing proposal. The judges subcommittee uh, have done that. There have been further meetings with the FCI and there will be um, further announcements concerning the way forward that, uh, in that particular field in the months to come. But I mean, the simple fact is that uh, I think the General Committee share the view that we really do need to expand our field of judges. Yes. Uh, we don't want to become a little Britain. Um, there are some great judges uh, outside our borders. Um, and there are some great judges inside and we just need to develop a balance going forward. Um, and uh, sticking with that, that arrangement that was scrapped by the membership was an, another point that you brought up. Uh, flexibility and changing attitudes, uh, both for the membership and for the, the Kennel Club as a whole. Yeah, I, I mean, the principle of um, changing or moving forward with the times is something that I think has in the last 18 months being grasped and I think certainly I'm feeling that uh, there is a, an enthusiasm to move forward, there's a recognition of the need both in terms of protecting uh, the stakeholders interest, uh, the business, the kennel club directors, uh, developing the kennel club um, services towards its stakeholders, we need to move forward. Yes. Uh, there was a view expressed to the membership forward that there were a forum that we were moving too quickly. Likewise, there's a very strong view uh, exhibited uh, at the same forum um, that uh, we weren't moving forward quickly enough. <laughs> so, um, you, you know, certainly the general committee recognizes the need to um, do a whole range of things. Uh, what we need to do is take the membership and the, uh, the dog show public at large, the stakeholders, with us and that's what we're trying to do. But we are making a significant stride. Um, and the Cannon Club in the past few years has had uh, quite a lot of dealing in property. Uh, from the move on Clarges Street uh, to new canine centres, mm. any more plans to, to expand the portfolio? Yeah, I mean there are four projects we're currently looking at. It is, um, we talked about all-purpose or multi-purpose uh, canine activity centres and we've been looking at that over a few years. That is an extremely uh, difficult uh, objective to try and satisfy. Mm. Everyone um, wants it on their doorstep. Well, everybody wants it on their doorstep and you know very simply there aren't uh, large um, areas of land in the middle of nowhere where there aren't other facilities where you can go and you know, erect a large building which can cover all sorts of canine activity centres. So we've got a range of activities. There will be a project being put forward to the membership later in the year for them to consider. Um, but, you know, there are pros and cons with all this stuff, Simon. And, and all I will say is that we can continue to consider everything that's being put forward. Um, but uh, when we receive objections and, and things like that, then we haven't received so many alternative proposals. So, as I say, there are four projects in the pipeline at the moment, each of which will, uh, as and when appropriate, as and when considered ready to go before the membership, will be put, or they won't go to the membership if they don't pass through the, the hurdle of the general committee. <laughs> um, and that's been more than a year, about 18 months at the helm. Uh, are you satisfied with what's gone on? Are there any achievements that you can highlight throughout the year? 
Well, I, I think um, I'm satisfied with progress. What I'm particularly pleased with is the way the General Committee are working together. We've broken down some of the barriers that the General Committee of the Kennel Club, which is elected by the membership, are all pulling together now, working together. They're all involved in all the decisions and there's a very good spirit and I, I'm very happy with that. Uh, on, on the actual changes that are required in the context of whether it's governance or judging or anything like that, I suppose uh, I, I'm a little bit ambitious in the progress I would like to make because I feel the quicker we can make progress then the, the more quickly everybody will benefit from that. Or, although it, it's quite hard to explain that people have a natural aversion to change um, but again I think they're beginning to understand that um, we're now running a transparent organisation. Um, you talk about my the Welsh Kennel Club speech and things like that. It's quite actually difficult for me to write that speech this year because there's nothing that was new that hadn't been yeah, yeah. talked about in, I hadn't written about in letters or talked about. Um, so we're very transparent. I'm very pleased about that. And I, I just, I'm optimistic. And I think that we will move things forward on a, re on a regular basis. The judging, the, the, the I'd really want to see this judging um, training uh, move forward as, yeah. as quickly as possible because that's not just a UK issue that's a global issue yes. I want our judges judging abroad I want foreign judges coming here when invited and when qualified and uh, that and I think a few other things uh, will make a, a heap of difference to show entries and all sorts of other yes. things um, and I think that's wrapped up all the dog issues but uh, on another issue Warren Gatland the right choice uh, no. No. He was the right choice of those people who made themselves available. <laughs> Eddie Jones would have been the right choice if he wanted to beat the yeah, All Blacks. I, you know that and I know that. I just hope you can, you know, Scotland can get a member of the British Lions squad. I can probably think of one. Yeah. Yes. And number well, 15? Me, number 15 yeah. would, would probably be about as much as you could hope for. Uh, but anyway, I think good so. luck. But he is, the, he is just about the best in the world at the moment. Um, he's, Stuart probably, Hogg, if you, if you don't know. he's probably the best in Scotland. Sure, he's the best in he's the best in Britain by a long way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. We'll speak to you again next year. Okay.